Power Director peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you need from Power Director University. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a new product from Cyberlink called Screen Recorder 3. I will have a link to this product in the video description and it is an affiliate link so if you use that link you'll be kicking back a little something something to help me continue making videos like this for you. And guess what? I got a bonus for you. I'm going to put a coupon code for 10% off the price of Screen Recorder 3 in the video description as well. So you get a little bonus, use the link, get 10% off. All right? So. Let's go ahead and find out about this new product. Let's jump into Screen Recorder 3 and make it happen. Here we are in Screen Recorder 3. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. Let's get to recording and streaming. Screen Recorder 3 is a versatile solution for streaming, recording, and editing videos. It's great for gamers, vloggers, and even businesses. So if you're any one of those three or something else, and you wanna capture gameplay, uh, capture apps or programs that are presented on your desktop, or capture streams from your internal devices, or even do a live stream, this might be the solution for you. Stream Recorder 3 even comes with a slimmed down version of Power Director, which can be used for some simple editing that you can use after you record your videos. Let's start off by going into the preferences. So if you click on this little cog here, you open the preferences. And first you start off on the general section. And here you get to really control the application if you want it always to be on top. If you want to minimize it after you launch it, uh, if you want it to be minimized when you start recording or streaming, and uh, if you want to show it when you're recording or streaming is complete, you want it to come back up, those are options you can select here by just checking any of these boxes. Now, you can automatically check for software updates here, and then you can choose your language. So you can use a system language if it's supported, so it has to be one of the supported system languages, or you can choose user defined and scroll through the list of available languages here. Then you have file. And under file, you get to choose where your file exports to. So you can choose to save every time you record something and it'll be saved into a specific location on your computer. You can click on browse and choose a different location if you want to save it somewhere else rather than the default option. Then if you want to, you can choose a prefix for any captured videos. And if you want to have a specific name for your screenshots, you can go ahead and select that here. And you can select the file type between JPEG and PNG for your file type of your screenshots that you take. Then you have your video section. Under here, you get to choose your monitor setup. So do you want it to automatically record your primary, your secondary, or if you have a third monitor, do you want it to automatically record that? And then you have your performance, so you can enable hardware encoding if you wish to do so. If you have a video card that has hardware encoding, you can choose this option if you want. And then you have your editing option. So you have the option to create a .mrk file when your recording is done. And this basically is good if you're gonna be using PowerDirector to edit the file afterwards. And then if you lock to an application, you can choose to only record that selected window. Last but not least, you got your bit rate and you can choose a lower or higher bit rate. Just use your slider to move down to a lower bit rate if you want to or up to a higher bit rate. So your bit rate will determine your quality, but also your file size. So take that into consideration if you decide to change the bit rate. The higher the quality, the larger the file size. Lower the quality, lower the file size. Then you have audio. So in the audio section, you can choose to use your microphone. You can turn it on or off, and then you can also choose to turn your system audio on or off. If you choose both, then you get a mix of the two. Uh, you can go further to the system audio side or further to your microphone side, or you can leave it balanced somewhere in the middle. Or you can choose in between that if you want 
to be somewhere in between the middle and the high end, you can move it to wherever you want on that spectrum. Then you have your hardware setup. So if you have multiple microphones or multiple devices that have a microphone on them, then you can choose which one you want to be the microphone to record your audio. You can adjust your mic volume here so that you can make sure it doesn't go into the yellow or the red. If you don't want to have any popping or crazy sounds, make sure that your audio stays in the green. And then if you have an input device that uh, you want to input like, um, I don't know, an instrument, uh, some radio, something else, then you can choose where that device, which one of those devices you want to use as an input device. And you can select the input volume as well. You have webcam. And when you choose webcam, you get to select what you want to use as your webcam. So if you have multiple devices linked up to it, you can select those different devices. And then you can choose the size of your PIP window. And you can drag it and move it to where you want it to show up during the recording. Then you have your hotkeys. So these are the hotkeys that you can use to stop, start, pause, turn your webcam on or off. If you don't like these buttons that it has selected, then you can choose from the available F buttons that are not being utilized. So then you have the improvement program. And if you want to share your experience, crashes, freezes, things like that with Cyberlink, this is where you choose to participate in that program and share your information with them. Once you have everything set up like you like, you can go ahead and click on OK. And now that we've got all of our settings how we want them, let's go ahead and get into the recording tab. So on the record tab, you have several options here. The first one is full screen. So if you choose to record full screen, it's going to record that primary monitor or whatever monitor you set up as your default for recording. And then you get to choose your video resolution. You get to choose your video frame rate. And then you can choose whether or not you want to record your mouse clicks. If you do choose to record mouse clicks, you can choose the color of the mouse between these available colors. Then you can choose whether or not you want your webcam to be recorded. And then you can choose whether or not you want your microphone to be recorded. Pretty simple. Then you have game. Now you can record gameplay from your PC or capture it directly from your gaming console. So the settings here are the same as they were under the full screen, except you have the application option instead of mouse clicks because you won't be able to see mouse clicks. So if you click on select an application to record, if you have a game open at the time when you're doing this, then you can select that game. And if you want to just record the overlay from a, if you have NVIDIA GeForce or anything else on your screen, whatever applications are open, you get to see those here. Here's a game that I have open so I could choose that and then I could start recording that if I click on record. Then we have the option to lock to an application. So this basically will lock the recording onto a specific app regardless of the size of that application. It's going to lock it right onto that. So you would select it on your screen and it will lock to that application. Then you have custom. For custom, you can create your own custom size that you want to record. It'll just record whatever's inside that little box there. And then you have device. So if you have an input device, like right now I have a DSLR that's hooked up right now using a HDMI capture card. If I click on that, then you'll see that the DSLR is pointed at the back of my meaty head. So you can see the, that meat neck and that meat head right there with those 
little eggs right there. You got to get that egg, get it out of there. But anyway, you can see that if you hook up a device and you have the capability to hook it up through uh, whatever cables or whatever you have, it'll be available as an option there. And you can record to external devices that you have input on your computer as well. And then one more thing I want to show you here is the open library settings. So if I click on open library, anything that I recorded and saved to that default location will show up in this open library section. And then if I want to edit that video, I can click on this option here to edit. And it'll ask me if I want to use the screen recorder editor or if I want to edit with my full version of PowerDirector that I have on my PC. If I choose the screen recorder, then it's going to bring up this simplified version of PowerDirector. At least that's what I call it for uh, editing. You can add titles and you can add transitions and do some simple splits of your clips using this. So I'm just going to close this out. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is the stream tab. You can connect your PC or console directly to Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook and stream video in up to 4K Ultra HD quality using the stream functionality. So I'm going to select YouTube and then I'm going to click on login. Now it's going to tell me, hey, do you want to authorize us to be able to access YouTube? And I'm going to click on authorize. I'm going to enter my email and I'm going to click on next. And enter my password and click on next. And if you have two step verification, then you'll have to enter whatever verification you use here. and then click on next. And then click on allow. And now I'm good to go. So here I have some settings. So I'm gonna click on settings first and I'm gonna give it a title. And right now I'm going to select private because I don't want anyone to see that I'm streaming live right now and think, oh, Malik's live and I'm going to go watch him because I'm just showing you guys the tutorial. So I'm going to click on private and I'm going to click OK. And then the video resolution that I want is selected here. Frame rate that I want. And if I want to copy this live URL, I can copy it. I can send it out in Twitter or Facebook and say, hey, uh, I'm about to go live on YouTube. If you want to watch me, here's a link to help people who maybe aren't on YouTube right now. Maybe they're on other social platforms to see that, hey, I'm about to go live. Usually you want to kind of set things up a few days before you go live and you could do that through YouTube. but. If you're using the screen recorder and you just want to send out a quick reminder to everybody right before you go live on other social media platforms, it's a great way to do that. So now that I got all this set up, I just want to make sure that what I'm recording is correct. So I want to go to the record tab. And if I want to record my screen, then I'm going to click on full screen. And that's what I want to live stream right now. If I want my mouse clicks to show up, my webcam to be included and my mic to be recording. If I was going to live stream a game, then I would need to choose game and I would need to choose the game app on my PC that I want to record. Same thing for device. If I wanted to record, Hey, I want everybody to see what my DSLR is looking at right now. Then I would choose that as a device. So just make sure you click on, the thing that you want to record. I want to record my screen. So I'm going to click full screen. 
I want my webcam to be on. I want all these settings. They look good. So now I'm going to go back to the stream tab. And if you want to, before you click on live, you can choose to save a copy of your stream to your PC. So I'm going to click on live. And now whatever's on my screen is actually live on YouTube. And if I bring up YouTube right now, you'll see that if I go to the live streaming tab under the creator studio, that it shows that I'm live right now. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to stop this. And then it's going to save it because I said it could save it to disk. So it saved that live stream to my PC in the same default location as my other files. And that's it, people. Screen Recorder 3. All right, Power Director Peeps, that's it for the Screen Recorder 3 review. How'd you like it? Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Now, don't forget, use that affiliate link to go ahead and buy the software and use that 10% coupon code that I have in the video description. Now, I want to thank you guys for watching this video all the way through to the end. Truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a shout out to one of my subscribers. Go fast, turn left. Go fast, turn left makes Speedway Saloon car racing videos on their YouTube channel. So, if you're into car racing or you love that Speedway Saloon thing, head on over to their channel, check out a couple of their videos, and if you're feeling what they're dealing, make sure that you subscribe. All right, Power Director peeps, if you want to get a shout out like Go Fast, Turn Left did, make sure that you go to the video description and fill out our shout out request form. If you have a video that you'd like us to make, go to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk or chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash the subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you click the bell, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. And that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.